Welcome to another quick take with BOA Middle East. With me is Miriam Al Khawaja. She is a human rights activist uh, from Bahrain. Also with me is Mr. Richard Salman. Uh, Salam. Also with me is Mr. Richard Salam. He is the deputy director of Physicians for Human Rights. Uh, I'm glad that we were here to hear your testimony and thank you for talking with us. Uh, we have heard over the weeks some pretty horrifying uh, accounts of what went on in Salmania Hospital. Uh, yesterday we had the privilege of being able to interview an emergency room physician, now uh, the new chief of the Bahrain uh, Medical Society, who was not there the night that all hell broke loose. His account is so very different. He tells a story of a hospital under siege by doctors who had turned to the side of protesters and, and, and doctors who had no business being there, basically taking, taking over the hospital. Uh, he spoke of doctors deliberately uh, administering harm to patients to make it look as if uh, injuries were worse than they are, resulting in two deaths. What we hear from you in your testimony today is so vastly different. How in the world do we reconcile these two very differing reports? Those are starkly different uh, scenarios. Uh, what I can say is, having been there myself with a, a senior forensic pathologist of physicians for human rights, Dr. Nitsam Pirwani, who is a chief medical examiner in Texas, what we discovered after meeting with almost 50 eyewitnesses to human rights abuses, medical personnel, including doctors and nurses at Salamania Hospital who were there during the protest when approximately 700 patients uh, wounded from the protests uh, were ent entered into the hospital, is that uh, these uh, civilian protesters who were uh, staying at the Salamania Hospital were in fact tortured by the security forces that overran the hospital. Uh, the physicians uh, do not run the hospital. Uh, they have no control. It is the BDF, the Bahraini Defense Forces, as well as special forces and riot police who, uh, I see them with my own eyes, they are on every floor of the hospital. Uh, most of them are wearing black ski masks to hide their identity. Uh, one young uh, military who was there at the hospital when I was, I asked him point blank, why are you wearing this black mask? And he said, those are my orders. And I, all I can say is that the evidence, including forensic evidence that we obtained during our investigation in, in, in April, paints a completely different story. It, it paints a story uh, where the government authorities are systematically targeting these physicians. And why? Because these are the people who treated the protesters. These are the people who had evidence of the atrocities committed by the government. And it is our firm contention that the government is abducting these physicians because they themselves are evidence of their atrocities. There's been much made of a group of Asian men in handcuffs that were brought from inside of an ambulance into the hospital. Do you know anything about that particular case? Um, you need to ask one for her. They have to be quick takes. Medium, the attacks on Asian workers, did they occur? By whom and for what reason? I must say that I don't have a lot of information about these cases. Um, the government keeps putting on videos. Uh, we have not, per I've personally not seen any evidence to these cases. I do know that some uh, expats were caught when attacking protesters by the protesters. Their, their weapons, they, they were carrying swords and knives. Their weapons were taken away from them. And then uh, there were rumors that they were going to be taken to the protest at the square. But then for their own safety, they were taken to the hospital where they were treated and then released. Um, that, and this is according to what I know. Um, otherwise, I don't have much information about those cases. Well, I'll ask. I'm rolling go. Uh, Ms. Al Khawaja, Mr. Salam, uh, you came here with a message for the U.S. government. What is it that you are asking, both of you? It's time for the United States government uh, to speak out forcefully and publicly in no uncertain terms. Uh, 
about the egregious violations that are taking place in Bahrain. Uh, the U.S. government, uh, the President, and the Secretary of State need to name these human rights violations. Uh, there is torture going on, there is killing going on, and medical personnel are being specifically targeted. Uh, I think it behooves the government of the United States to talk, uh, talk out forcefully against these human rights violations, and only then do I believe that uh, the Bahrain government may cease uh, some of these uh, egregious tactics. Madigan. I echo Mr. Solomon's requests to the U.S. government, and I also think that um, looking into things like um, holding a session on Bahrain at the U.N. is very, very important, highlighting what kind of violations have taken place, and also looking at different things that could be impacted uh, that come from the U.S., like the free trade agreement or the arms uh, sales that go to these countries. I think all these things can have a very huge impact on the situation in Bahrain. Well, thank you both very much for talking with us. Thank you. And keep us close. Thank you.